Let us race, race against the dying of the light. And if I may direct your attention to this acid cursor height. That's right. Vulnerability is 1002. Open security training. The only class that gives you straight up poetry as you're learning about vulnerabilities. So cursor is acid. Acid height is acid. Acid width is acid. Calls into something called cursor alloc. Well, this is going to be the first fetch from this shared memory region. Hmm. And if we look at the definition of cursor alloc with these, oh, signed integers, integer width, integer height, some acid math. Yes, there is a lot of acid math going on here. That's not good, but this is not the integer overflow section. We'll keep that in mind, but we'll actually come back to that later because that is actually not necessary to exploit the double fetch vulnerability here. So that's bad, but for now, let's just go ahead and assume that the data size calculates out to be hex 100. But what is good is the fact that this gmalloc0 is actually a zeroing allocator. So that's good from the OODA vulnerability perspective. Certainly, we don't have to worry about uninitialized data. And then those acid values get filled in there. But let's keep going and see what's happening here with these acid values. So there was an allocation, which is zeroed at least. And then there's a switch based on this acid type. Well, if we go down further in this code, we'll see that if we take this particular switch case, then we have acid height times acid width times size. So we again have some more acid math. That's not good. But the important thing here is this is actually a second fetch from this shared memory location that is cursor. So in the previous calculation, we assumed that for alloc purposes, this math added up to hex 100. This time, let's assume that the size is hex 200. So size now is going to be hex 200. So QXL unpack chunks. What happens in there? Well, we've got the acid size being passed in. We've got the cursor chunk, which is an acid value as well. And so we go in here. And so if we just collapse down this code for a second, we know that the cursor alloc we said was doing the first fetch. And at that point, it was allocating a cursor C with a size of hex 100. And then in this second fetch, it's a size of hex 200. And so what happens is we take a look at that QXL unpacked chunks. We dive in, we've got the size, we've got the chunk that is acid as well. And we ultimately get ourselves into a for loop that's really more like a while loop that can be broken out of. And we've got attacker controlled chunk size. So this QXL data chunk acid, attacker controlled chunk size also being used with a min of size minus offset. And so the attacker can control which of those two values will be used. So bytes will be acid. And ultimately we have a mem copy with acid bytes, acid source and a final destination. So if this allocation was hex 100, that's gonna be an under allocation, and this is gonna be an over copy. So that is our traditional heap overflow. That's not safe. We've got acid lengths, acid source, and fixed size or sassy size destination buffers. So this is not a time of check, time of use, insofar as there's no real checks here, and that of course does not speak to good code quality. No real sanity checks there. And so it is a double fetch, but we're not going to call it a talk to attack. So what was the fix for that? Well, it's pretty simple. You just don't double fetch. So in this particular case, they already had this fetched version of these things, right? That was passed into C, uh, the cursor alloc. And then at the end of it, it took those widths and heights and put it into C. So the easy fix always for double fetch vulnerabilities is if you've got a private copy, use the private copy. If you don't have a private copy, you better get one. But now let's return to that bonus bug and those integer overflows we saw going on. Yes, those were other CVEs. They're not, you know, race conditions things, or they're not technically for this section, but just to call it out, you know, acid height, acid width, of course, this is acid maths, definitely as bad as an acid bath. And so that is the first opportunity for an integer overflow. But yes, there is another opportunity because that is acid math. That's an acid multiplication. This is an acid addition. And so that could also overflow. So of course, integer overflows, that's exactly what we expect. And that ultimately can lead to situations such as under allocation of the zero to malloc and eventual overcopy later on in that mem copy.
So what was the fix for that? Well, there are a few things like adding in asserts, but this is the, the core fix right here, right? It was an integer data size, and they changed it to a size T. That's an unsigned type. That's good. That's the maximum size type. So if it's 32-bit, it's 32-bit code. It's 32-bit. If it's 64, it's 64. So that is a good fix. That is a signed size slaughter, exactly like we recommended back in the integer section, integer uh, other integer issue section. So that is a thumbs up, but what is this? They left the width and height as signed sizes. So that is a failure to slaughter your signed sizes. And as a consequence, when we look down here and we see that a signed size is checked against 512, well, that doesn't seem right to me. What if the width is negative? A very large number like 2 billion. That's going to mean that this sanity check does a whole lot of nothing. So all of a sudden you can be doing things like multiplying 2 billion times 2 billion, wrapping around, causing an injury overflow, and the sanity check did not work because of the failure to solder those signed sizes. So if you're the kind of person who's inclined to go get CVEs, perhaps this is a still pending and open vulnerability. So maybe you should go check the latest code out and find out whether or not this issue still exists. Then there were a few more things for the sanity checks, but they're not particular, uh, particularly relevant to this. Uh, they're just, you know, checking whether the allocation fails and also another assert. Now we see other places in this class that asserts are not exactly good things to use for sanity checks because oftentimes they are compiled out in release. So I had to go and check for sure, you know, is this actually going to be used? Well, it turns out, yes, this is one of the very, very few cases where we see asserts actually used in production. So that's good, but there's actually an interesting, uh, funny comment in here. So they say that we have a lot of unaudited code that may fail in strange ways or even be a security risk during migration if you disable assertions at compile time. So indeed, that's the problem for everyone else, but they at least recognize it and call it out. And they say, you know, look, we are using asserts for actual security checks. So you have an option to, there are compile options that can disable asserts. And if you do that, this thing's going to lose a lot of sanity checks and it's almost certainly going to have buffer overflows and everything else. So that was kind of interesting to me that they recognized that.